So here we've got the much loved 79 series cruiser. So what we're gonna do, pull the carpet, pull the seats, pull the headliner, and install a range of materials. So let's get started. So first thing we're gonna do is remove our seats. 14 mil socket, good thing to do, get yourself a bucket. Anything you take off there, put in here, that way you're not gonna lose parts. So there's two bolts at the front, two bolts at the back. Now the ones at the back, I'll just show you. They've got a plastic cover on, this is where Tyler went late model. Cover this up for you, make it pretty. Didn't worry about the front ones. Just flex these to the side and they'll unclip. Then that'll expose another 14 mil bolt. So two of those, we'll take them out now. You'll notice on these bolts too, I'll just come around, they're a fine thread. All your seat bolts are always gonna be a fine thread. So you'll find these are separate to other bolts that are used in the truck. So our rear seat here, they've got these small caps on it. I've taken the one off the other side just to show you how this comes off. So what you wanna do is flex the clip this way and then try and pop the top off, roll it off. So we'll do this one here for you. So we'll flex it and you see little tags at the top. We're gonna to come up at the same time. Let them snap just over. And it's, that's the guy there, you're trying to be careful not to snap him. If you get those guys over, he'll come straight out. And then a couple more 14 mils, we'll pull them out. So you might have to crack the bolt here, either with a, um, a socket or with a spanner. Sometimes these bolts have a, a thread lock on them. Go do the next one. So we've flipped our rear seat forward. Under the carpet here is another bolt. So this little plastic cap, if you just squeeze it, you'll be able to pull it off. All I've done is squeezed it and flexed it like that to get these little teeth to snap off. And then we've got more bolts in there. We'll undo these and then we should be able to lift this seat out. So we'll pull our center console out. You can see there's one, two, there's a screw in the front couple of screws at the back. We'll start undoing these. So there you go, you can see. One, two, three, four, five screws. Console's out. So there's three screws holding the cup holder to the base support. One from underneath, which goes in there, is up that way. Two on the back, or the front side of the mount that you can't see until you pull it forward which is screwing there and there. Once you separated those, you've got access to this guy. You can get the power supply out of it. It's just one little tag there, press that in, pull that guy out, then you can remove these two from the truck. The carpet's almost ready to come out. We've just got to remove the sill trims. As you can see, this is the one from the driver's side. It's got four clips in it. Now these clips, they're flexible, they're not brittle, you won't snap them. But the easiest way to get these guys off is just a quick shock. Don't try and bend them slowly. You're better off just getting your fingers underneath. You don't want to use any screwdrivers or tools under here. And just give it a, give it a yank. Move down, you can feel the next clip. Next clip, next clip. We're gonna do the same thing to the back one. Just give it a quick snap. That way you're not gonna leave any screwdriver marks in it. The carpet, so we wanna just unbolt these two seat belts. That guy's got a plug there, so just press him in. Pull him out. All this guy will do will read your seat belt warning light, so your seat belt's not plugged in and start beeping at you. So you can keep these bolts in this mount. You can see they've got this retaining sort of captive washer. That'll stop that from falling out so you don't lose it. Note that the driver's side one had this mount running rearward of the car. Passenger side doesn't seem to have one. Be careful not to lose that washer. It's like a spring-loaded washer. So we'll just spin him back on. So your kick trim's down here. Down here you can see they've got a plastic threaded fastener. I'll be able to undo this with my fingers. 
There we go. So he just comes off and then simply pull this guy rearward and just feed him out. So we'll take both left and right off. So we've got our foot rest here. With this guy, you've got to be careful around thickness wise, around the floor. It's hard on the floor pan here, so we can't afford to put any thickness around it. So what we're going to do when we put our underlay in is keep this area clear, otherwise you won't get this guy back on. Now he simply snap fits. It's a little bit painful to get off, but I've just pulled the rear up and then the top should In behind there. So your footrest here, there's two threads. These guys are designed to get pushed straight over, but they don't want to pull off backwards. So you can unscrew them off. We found that this lower one, we could pull it off and then we could turn this guy 90 degrees. So we got that guy off like that, but then we had to rock this and massage and lever it just to free up, you can see these clips here are designed to clip in there. So when that guy goes in, he's designed to go in there once. And you're trying to fight that guy. If you manage to twist this, massage it off, you'll eventually get it off. This thing's pretty robust, so you won't break it. But it really is designed to go in, in the vehicle once. So that guy's gonna snap straight back on there. But keep in mind that clearance, there's nothing under this floor, so we're a bit limited on what we can put in this footprint. So to get the carpet out, we've got to remove this guy. Little console mount, then we've got this guy here. Probably the easiest thing for us to do is just snip this bit of carpet here. Rather than upsetting this, we'll save ourselves a bit of time. There's no advantage in this being connected. Snip that section of carpet. A little bit we snipped over here, he should feed out from underneath. Oh, like that. Now we can go ahead, pull all the carpet out. You can see at this stage, the underlay that's factory on the car, and you can see where it's only used in key areas. So we're gonna take the headliner out now. We're gonna to have to take these seat bolts out, this grab handle, this plastic cover, just squeeze it, and you'll find the one button, and you can just rattle these out. Just let that guy sit there. These ones are held in with torx bits. Got a grab handle over here. Now, trick to getting these guys out. You can use a flat blade screwdriver, but you don't want to get in there and pry there and leave damage. So if you get it in the gap, push tension on up 45, and then flick it this way, you'll find you deform this guy that'll come out, you won't leave a mark in here. So push up and give it a quick flick. Just gotta find out where it went. So you can see on this guy, no witness marks. So you see on this side, we're gonna take the C pillar out now. It's got two visual Christmas tree clips. We'll get those guys out. This is one on the opposite side, which sits like that. And you can see it's got one, two, three, four. Now I found once we've got these clips out, we can slide this forward and that'll allow those clips to come out that way. So 
So we'll get under this clip here. Just need to get an edge of it up. Get underneath with this guy. Lever him out. That's him. Same up the top. And now, let's get your fingers under it. You can see one clip there, he's come out successful. There we go. Now we can take these guys out. And we'll load them back into the panel so we can put it back on later. Now we've got our B-pillar trim here. This is the one from the opposite side. You can see it's got one clip up there. These are locator pins. And then this will want to be removed vertically. So we're going to snap the top out, then lift it up. We've left the lower B-pillar trim on just to save a bit of time not to have to take all that seat belt off. So you can just flex this one of these sides off will give us enough room. We'll get under this guy from the top. Snap him out. Make sure your pinch weld's off. And then we can just lift him straight up and out. So we've got our rear vision mirror here. You can see a giveaway under here. It's got a part line here, which looks like this is a cover. Another way to see the difference to know how to get in there is, you can see this panel's got a texture, this doesn't, which means it's manufactured as a different piece. So the easiest way to get this guy off is, I just got the lever under the side, flex that out, and that pop that clip in there, come straight off. Then we've got two screws up here to pull it out. You'll notice with these threads, they're a metric fine thread, where all your other, a lot of your plastic clip fittings, they use a coarse thread, which your sun visors, it's more like a wood type screw, but it's designed for sheet metal on a burst hole, where that's a mechanical thread. So just keep in mind, on your rear vision mirror, it uses the fine mechanical thread, just before we drop the headliner, one more thing. There's a couple of screws under here, which this is a carryover part since I remember seeing these in the 80s. But if we just put this down the side and twist that, this will pop out. Another clip over there. You can take that out. It's got four mounts in it. Which another guy, just press it on the side. So we're ready to drop the headliner now. Usually your headliners are lighter materials too, and you're gonna find your hands are grubby. You can either go and wash them or just throw on a set of gloves. That's gonna stop your fingerprints marking all the headliner. So what's good about this truck is they've actually split the headliner in two pieces, which means we can take these right out of the truck. Some of the dual cabs will have one piece headliner, which means you're gonna be limited to get it out of the truck, usually it's put in through the front windscreen before the glass goes in the car. Um, you're gonna struggle to get it out and then try and get it through a door. So what you're almost better doing is, um, if you've got the seats in, you can just drop it, sit it on the roof, uh, but you're gonna either have to drop it down, do one side, and then get it over the other side. But for this truck, this has got a couple of exposed clips, so we're gonna go ahead and just take all those guys out and drop this down. Oh yeah, 